Oh, stop. From the back, I'm disappointed to hear this attack on the European Union because I think of it as coming out of a movement to counter the war and destruction of the last century. And the benefits are not just measured in how much money is coming into the Council. There are probably many people in this room who have worked with the EU and benefited from funds. But there are also huge cultural benefits. There are the Erasmus exchanges, there are the students in school exchanges. Is that something that we just want to throw away? I think we have to think about the bigger picture rather than arguing about which sums come and go. There are lots of criticisms to make about the EU at the moment, but that uh, we have a lot more benefit from it than disadvantage. On the living wage, absolutely, as Anouk said, we need to keep up the pressure on businesses. We need to get more businesses signing up to it. On the national level, we need to make sure that those businesses are paying taxes in this country and that they're good employers. And the living wage campaign is just a part of that. In terms of housing, it has been very disturbing to see what's happened at the Haygate, the loss of the mixed community there. And I know that that's been an enormously long process and that there was pressure then to get something done, to get some houses built. But there was also a seduction by the glamour of the, what was offered by the developers. And I think there is a different way to do things. And the Hidden Homes project is an example of that, of going little by little, converting unused spaces around the borough to social housing and also sometimes for sale, keeping mixed communities making use of spaces that are neglected. Where I live, there have been drying rooms that have not been used for 20 years, just locked up, empty. They've now become very glamorous studio flats. It's another way to do it. We don't have to have a raised the earth policy of cutting down all the trees at the Haygate urban forest and building something that's just for a small number of people, perhaps even for international investors. Where does the money go? In a similar way to the Hidden Homes project, I think that the council could release a lot of money by thinking about policies and about where the money is spent and demanded now, how we could release more funds from the community. So for example, on cycle storage, which is an issue that I'm very close to my heart, I've been campaigning on, the council charges a fee of £178 if a landlord is willing to put in a cycle lock in their front garden. Now, if they waived that fee, we would release a lot more will, goodwill from house owners and landlords who might be willing to pay £500 to put in a cycle lock in their front garden if they knew it could be easily done without the faff of putting in a planning application. The £178 doesn't cover the council's costs. It's just moving some money around, putting people off, spending their own money for social goods. Thank you. Thank you. Right.